Right, anybody else that makes videos about these Tesla shows what they do for cooling since you know they don't come with fans. See I got quite a monstrosity going on here. Originally just to uh, make sure that the thing would run and whatnot before I committed too much time or effort into it. I just had this 12,000 RPM ridiculousness taped on the end. But that's very loud and obnoxious. So for the VRM it's a little 40 millimeter. Full speed it's obnoxious so it's just connected to 5 volts through Molex. That's more than enough for the VRM. Bent up some plastic for a shroud here to direct all the air. I pull what's left of the shroud off and the fan just comes off with it. And then there's a little duct here that directs the air down. I want to try to get it between the uh, cold plate and the base plate here to try to help with the VR, uh, the VRAM temps because that's not great. This plate here is what originally had the fin stack on top of it. Just threw it up on my gas stove, full blast, and just used a butter knife to lift the uh, heat sinks off. There's a, another video up on the channel about that. And I didn't have great contact with this cooler against the heat pipes that were there. I wasn't even expecting heat pipes to be under there. But I tried to solder a piece of copper on top of that thinking, oh, solder, even if it's not full contact, it'll make good enough contact tr to transfer the heat real well. And then this up against a flat piece of copper transfer heat well there too because this whole thing would get hot because it's sucking away heat but then it wasn't making it to the cooler very well blew the heat pipes trying to solder that on so you can actually barely see that bit of copper there just, just there's just a copper plate between this cooler and the GPU silicone I want to put some uh, thermal pads underneath this between it and the base plate to really help suck some of that heat away but for now it's not bad. I also have this fan. Just got some zip ties thrown in the end. I just set it there. Cause there just there needs to be some airflow over it. A good bit of airflow for the VRAM to not be painful to touch. And I don't like let, letting things get that hot. This is a Noctua NHL 12. I got for super cheap. Without the mounting hardware. With this all set up the way it is with the Noctua fan. The hot spot reading was about 74 degrees. But I have it mounted up here above, above the 6770 blowing air down. In this whole area, even with this little exhaust fan down here, this whole area would get hot as hell, just basically cooking that card. So, instead of the Noctua, I have this thing, which is somewhat noisy, but put that on there and it helps. The GPU's only reading like 2 degrees cooler, but this area down here stays much cooler. So I deal with the noise and this thing isn't even, I can't even do speed control. Not that I know of any decent piece of software that would allow me to use the GPU temperature to control system fan headers. This speed fan doesn't work with this motherboard, unfortunately. But, uh, that's what I got. Oh, and I should mention, normally the NHL 12, the heat pipes come out and go out this way a little bit. I bent it specifically for using it in this way so that I can mount it in top slot and not hit the rest of the motherboard. You can see it's also a little mangled there from when I had it installed on an Intel server motherboard. But I needed it for this more. You could probably tell by looking at it, but I just have some screws sticking through the original cold plate. And then it's just this flat piece of steel holding the knock to, a, to this base plate. So if it wasn't clear, it mounts with the original four screws on the back, so mounting pressure and all that's the same. 
if you really wanted a cheap way to do water cooling on it too, you could get like an AIO and do the same thing. Not have to buy something custom and not have to worry about getting mounting pressure right and all that. So yeah, there's the noise of it. Not great. But if I go stick the side panel on, it's still not great, but better. I can, I'm at least able to cut that noise out easy enough while I'm streaming so it doesn't carry through my mic horribly. This thing, I, I, I just couldn't do anything about that noise and have decent audio at all. So this happens basically every time I turn it on. I've seen the motherboard logo, seen the little dots going around in a circle like Windows was loading, but then it sits at a black screen. I don't know why, but usually I just do usually after that it cooperates I don't know why but as long as it keeps cooperating from that then whatever I'll live with it and it'll be alright Glad I'm booting from an SSD, otherwise this would be obnoxious. Yeah, see, there it goes. 